How does yoga inspire author Beth Fallett? We're going to find out today. But before we do, please subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with the latest Canadian author interviews and behind the book stories. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's episode of All About Canadian Books. I am so excited to have author Beth Follett as a guest this week. Beth is a novelist, an essayist, a publisher, a poet, and today we'll be discussing her second novel, Instructor, which was published by Breakwater Books. And here's a little taste about what Beth's novel is all about. When Yadessa Bloom's husband dies in a Cessna crash in a mid-Ontario lake, she rents a cottage at that lake without really comprehending why, and she stays for three months. There she meets three people who will influence her life dramatically. Her landlady, a yoga teacher, and Henry Rattle, a precocious eight-year-old boy. Years later, at the age of 25 and reeling from personal tragedy, Henry seeks Yadessa out once again, and they find themselves alone on the day of the Northeast blackout, drawn into an encounter that will change them both. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Beth. Thank you, Crystal, very much. I'd love to just jump right in because, Beth, my favorite question, which always intrigues me as a reader, is what inspired you to write Instructor? So do you, do you mean the very early inspiration? Exactly, yes. Okay. What was that little niggle that got you going? Okay, well... That niggle happened in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, I had been taking yoga more seriously for two years. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing um, in sort of mainstream yoga magazines and so forth, uh, a lot of emphasis on the fitness element of yoga and not so much on the ancient spiritual practice of yoga. So these were the days when Lulu Lemon was just starting up and everybody was mad about, um, you know, consuming these uh, designer tights and mm. This was not yoga for me. And I was wondering how um, anybody would be able to resist this force that is capitalism that you know pounds down on us as we try to do something different. And I had been spending a little bit of time with a yoga teacher in Baptiste Lake which is a real lake in Ontario, who told me that when she had first started, she was accused of having a cult because yoga was considered so um, unconventional, threatening. Um, you know, it was young women and, well, young and, and older women who were participating in the classes and it really got people upset. So I knew that it had come through this beautiful beginning where yoga instructors really were embracing the spiritual elements. And now it was moving into being uh, appropriated by mainstream culture. So that, that was really the inspiration for it. it. It grew, of course, because I wrote it over the next you know 14 years but that was the that was the germ of it and you know as a reader beth that just your passion for yoga and meditation 
really shone through, like just with the attention to detail of, of the breath and the movement of the body. And I just thought that was so beautifully done. Thank you. I, I enjoyed that. And also, oh my gosh, I was captivated by 18, eight, well, by eight-year-old Henry Rattle. I just, he, he was my, my favorite character, I, I must confess. And just have to ask, where did this incredible child come from? Is he somebody you know or a character that you've developed? Um, not a specific person that I know. He's not based on any one person. Um, before I got involved in publishing, I worked in social services. Mm -hmm. As a young woman, I worked with um, young people. And I met a lot of uh, young people who were on the autism spectrum. But in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't understood. So there was a lot of brilliance, but there was also a lot of medicating um, these kids. And um, I think that sense of a child struggling with their own bright uniqueness was very much in me. And Henry came out of that. So, I mean, that's one of the joys of writing, isn't it? You create characters who you learn. I fiercely love Henry myself <laughs> and feel so happy to hear you or anybody oh. say that they like him. Uh, because I feel almost protective yeah. of the boy Henry and even the the 25 year old Henry mm. yeah yeah oh <laughs> I know and it was right like from the moment you met Henry it's just like oh who, who is this kid <laughs> like he's just fabulous um I'm just going through here now I also really liked how you structured your novel because, you know, as a reader, you really got into the headspace, you know, it follows the natural tendencies of the human mind to leap and dart back and forth. So Beth, was this something that you consciously set out when you to do when you were structuring the novel or did it evolve as you were getting into it? Um, it evolved. I, I knew uh, I'm not a writer of conventional work, you know, and I wasn't a publisher of conventional work mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot to disrupt in the 20, 20 and 21st centuries. You know, we've been um, colonized by a kind of thinking that makes it really hard to honor our own creativity and our own originality. And I see that especially in the book world where there are so many courses and um, workshops that pretend to know precisely how to go about writing anything, which immediately is suspect to me because we're looking for originality, aren't we? We're looking for a writer to get as close as possible to their uh, creative self, their soul, if you will. And um, so as I, I guess I was probably 10 years into the writing. So because I was a publisher all through the time of the writing and worked really night and day at the publishing house. I worked alone for most of the 25 years. Um, I had very little time to focus on the, the book, but I went to Banff to the writing studio there in 2015. And I had an aha moment there where I realized that to honor the reader in the way that I was writing the book, I needed to have gaps and leaps and places where the reader herself or himself would have a, a spaciousness as is 
talked about in mindfulness and meditation or a place where the there could be a gap. Yeah. And so that is why I structured it with the, the spaces between the writing so that the space becomes a psychological space, a place mm -hmm. for um, a different kind of awareness or presence with the book. And also, I, I you know, I, I don't find that there's anything in my life that's very linear. So <laughs> I had to structure it with circles yeah. and spirals because that does speak to my life. I, I do find that it's true. I, I repeat, I go back, mm -hmm. I circle around, I come on obstacles again, challenges mm -hmm. come again. You know, they're not ever finished the first time. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I wanted to write a book that had that kind of spiraling so that yeah. Even in parts two, we go back to part one's mm -hmm. time frame. Even in part three, we go back to two and one mm -hmm. um, in real time, you know, mm -hmm. just to honor what I think is a real structure in my own life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And y Yadessa, I, I was so, I was also really invested in her healing journey. You know, as a woman who suddenly loses her husband and I mean, alcohol is her first coping mechanism until she, I won't spoil anything, but comes out the other side on her healing journey. And I was just wondering, you know, as a writer, was it really hard for you to be in that headspace for such a long time, you know, between the grief and the alcohol and was it hard, was that hard for you? Um, yes, there were tendencies along the way to keep a lot of that material off stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because to bring it forward was painful, to bring the violence mm -hmm. forward and on stage um, was challenging because. I think all authors have a tendency to want to protect both themselves and their characters, you know, and um, all of us have a lot of questions about what should be brought onto the page, you know. Um, this is a time where I think we're a little bit, we tend to coddle, you know, um, trigger warnings, we're in that time in history where we feel we need to always help people not to let them come on anything unaware. And um, I think that just gets into us. So there was a tendency for me to be uh, in denial myself. So I had to keep um, hauling things, backstory things onto the page. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure a lot of yoga and meditation in, in between as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and when I was reading Beth, like so many times, I, I, you know, that's part of the fun as a reader to think, okay, where does this title come from? And at so many points, I was thinking, oh, okay, the instructor, it could be Henry, it could be Edessa, it could be, it could have been any one of your characters. Who, who is the instructor in your novel? Who did you think it was? I went, like, I, I flipped. At, at, in the end, I was thinking Yadessa, but then I, I think in part because of my a big attachment to Henry, I was, I, it was Henry. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the whole writing of the novel, it was called the yoga instructor. Okay. And at the end, I changed it to instructor because I had another look at every character, every main character, yeah. and felt that they 
we're all learning from one another. Yes. At different times, you know, that there was an interrelationship that was important. Mm. Um, and that it was not in our own sense of a teacher with a student, but I think the way we all learn mm. from one another, which is through observation and conversation and um, just being receptive to what the other is struggling through. So, you know, I think the only real um, scene in the book where somebody really tries to instruct and it goes poorly <laughs> is when Teresa tries to instruct Edessa. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, so I think, I, I'm glad to hear you say that it felt very fluid, like mm -hmm. they all could be instructor. Yes. And then I think life instructs us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, Beth, what are you currently working on right now? Um, well, recently I finished a poetry manuscript, which is mm -hmm. out for consideration. And with the novel just about released mm -hmm. and then the second book coming behind, I'm, I'm in a waiting period, but I'm reading um, as much material as I brought into the house over the last 10 years about climate. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I know that I'm working on a novel that will have as its foundation, the climate crisis. Yeah. Oh, fabulous, fabulous. Beth, a great big thank you for being a guest today on All About Canadian Books. I will put links down below in the description box with links to Breakwater's website so our viewers can purchase a copy of your incredible novel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.